Hi there. My name is John Slemp and I'm a photographer in Atlanta, Georgia. And I'm here to discuss my eight-year project photographing World War II flight jackets. Um, people ask me how I came up with that and etc. And I had known about the jackets for a long time, but I had never seen one. And in 2014, I asked around a group that I belong to, the Experimental Aircraft Association. We have a local chapter nearby. And I asked around if anybody had one. Sure enough, they had their uncle's jacket. They brought it in and I photographed it. And uh, through one of my earlier clients, I had met Dorothy Cochran, who's a curator at the Smithsonian Air and Space Magazine, or I should say museum. And just for fun, I sent it to Dorothy. Hey, this is something I'm working on. Thought you might be interested. And 58 minutes later, I got a separate email from their curator of the aviation clothing collection, Dr. Alex Spencer. And he said, we have 15 jackets that'll work for your project. When can you be here? Well, obviously I was uh, stunned, elated, surprised. And a few months later, I went up there and photographed 13 jackets. And at that point, it started to take on a little more serious uh, impetus, shall we say, in the back of my mind. And to make a very long story short, we wound up photographing in 12 different museums across the country, including the Smithsonian, the 390th Memorial Museum in Tucson, Arizona, uh, San Diego Air and Space Museum, um, the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force in Dayton, Ohio, uh, several smaller museums, etc., but um, and also privately owned jackets, and it just kept on growing and growing, and eventually I wound up photographing 162 jackets. Um, the Lighting was uh, something I came up with on my own. It's something I pride myself on being able to do fairly well, I think. Uh, seeing as how I've got 25 years plus experience now in this business. And uh, essentially it's a homemade light box. It's illuminated, uh, which separates the jacket from the background. I didn't want to do a lot of Photoshop work as far as backgrounds go. So I just made it a white background and I laid the jacket on there and I would get up on a ladder uh, six-foot ladder and shoot down on it and it was also lit from the top with a beauty dish from the top and a grid coming across skimming across the jacket because I wanted to show texture but I also um, wanted it to be somewhat soft so there were three fill cards foam core uh, in a horseshoe shape down below and so that filled the light back in and I think we got the best of both worlds and it was all of the images were shot with a medium format camera. Uh, so the files are 350 meg, 16 bit. They're pretty darn big. And uh, we now have an exhibition in Virginia Beach, Virginia that went up in November of 2023. And the prints are five feet tall. And they were not res up rest very much at all to uh, get to that point. And they look fantastic. Uh, besides the jackets, once I started photographing the jackets and hearing the stories, it became apparent that I needed to also photograph the veterans. And fortunately, there were still a number around. Um, I'm a member of the 8th Air Force Historical Society. We have a local chapter here, and I photographed, oh, I don't know, half a dozen veterans there uh, who became friends, actually. And, uh, and it just continued to grow. And... Uh, once we decided to do a book, we also decided to create uh, video interviews as much as we could um, and audio interviews. And uh, video is something that's still relatively new for me, but I'm working on that. Um, but the stories, some of which have never been published, are, are pretty remarkable. Um, and I, I won't go into that too much, but it's... Uh, they're fascinating, some of them are funny, uh, some of them are heartbreaking, uh, and several have never been published before. So uh, I thought that was uh, important to include the stories, because the jackets are essentially walking billboards. Once you start seeing the symbology and recognizing and understanding the various symbols on the jacket, 
uh, it's it's a, a walking history of an individual's combat experiences. Um, so uh, it it became apparent that besides the jackets and the portraits, uh, I photographed other ephemera as well. Uh, sometimes medals, sometimes uh, service records, of listings of bombing missions, uh, because I really wanted to tell more of a complete story, more than just featuring the jackets. And that's how the book was structured, too. Um, being an Army veteran myself, I, I understand uh, military organization fairly well and that sort of thing, and I've always been interested in World War II history since I was a kid. Uh, we lived on Okinawa for four years. My dad was in the service uh, retired Green Beret and um, and then I was in the Army for almost 11 years so I understand the military fairly well and uh, so the jackets the organization of the book the jackets are broken down by theater uh, we have the European theater which is where the 8th Air Force was flying out of England and the majority of the painted jackets that I photographed were from that theater but we also have jackets from Italy and North Africa uh, we have jackets from the China Burma India theater and a lot of people aren't don't uh, remember or understand that it was very much a worldwide war and uh, and that we had forces in those parts of the world um, and uh, so we have jackets from all three theaters the Pacific is included in China Burma India and um, and then portraits uh, I did over 25 portraits if memory serves of um, veterans, and that includes World War II WASP, Women Air Force Service Pilots, and also Tuskegee Airmen. I felt it important to have those fellows included in the mix because um, they were an important part of the whole. And so uh, besides trying to round out in the book in that regard, we also have a chapter on the fashion and cultural influence of the jackets written by Laura McClaws Helms, who's a fashion historian in New York City. And she did a marvelous job for me and I learned a lot of things there that I had never really thought about or considered before. And there's a section written by Jeff Schrader, who's an appraiser for Antiques Roadshow. Um, I put the word out on Facebook that I was looking for somebody to speak knowledgeably about photograph or about collecting the jackets and uh, several people referred me to Jeff Schrader. So I contacted him, showed him what I was doing, and he agreed to do a section for free, actually, um, which was super nice. And, um, and it's, it's quite, quite good. A lot of it's common sense, um, and he's a good writer, too. His mother was an English teacher, so I didn't really uh, need to adjust his text or anything. And uh, it's a nice little section of the book. And then lastly, there's an FAQ section, uh, Frequently Asked Questions on How to Take Care of the Jackets, written by a professional conservator. And I should say also, we have a professional index. There were several books done in uh, 20, 25 years ago uh, on the subject, but they were not professionally photographed. They really don't feature much in the way of stories about the men's service, um, nor do they have an index. So I thought they were a good starting point, shall we say. Uh, the book was professionally edited. It's 398 pages. It's 12 by 12. You can see it over my shoulder here. And uh, it was printed here in the United States. I thought it important to uh, print it here in the States as well, since it's such an American subject. But one thing I should also say is that the while the jackets are in full color and that sort of thing on a white background, the portraits are black and white and they're done on a black background. And I thought it would be, make a nice contrast visually, uh, which turned out to be the case for exhibition and just uh, in general. All the portraits were done with the medium format camera as well, so the detail's pretty exceptional. I invite you to take a look at the work. Um, I, I just mounted an exhibition at the Military Aviation Museum, Virginia Beach, I may have mentioned that already, uh, in November of 2023. And we're actually looking to license the body of the exhibition, uh, you know, the look and feel, if you will, for other exhibitions across the country. And it's expandable. The graphic designer did a marvelous job on the graphics and so on, which you can see here. And um, 
all in all, we, we think it's a pretty compelling presentation and uh, mixed in with, you know, audio and video, um, it, it tells a story that's not often heard um, about the war. And in the minds of these people that I photographed, uh, it, the war was still very much fresh in their memories. Probably the only hurdles I had to overcome in photographing the project was finances. It was all self-financed. Um, I didn't really want to go asking for money on for people on, you know, the various uh, project, uh, GoFundMe and that sort of thing. I also uh, just wanted to retain control as far as the publishing goes. I, I did shop it around to several publishers and got some lukewarm interest. But at one point I realized that even had somebody said yes, it would have gone into a queue of books already ahead of me as far as the production goes. And it would have been at least a year down the line. There would have been a lot of considerations back and forth regarding uh, content and flow and uh, number of pages, etc. And I, I pretty much had a good idea of what I wanted to do. And, and so at one point, I just decided I'm going to publish it myself. And that's what we did. A graphic designer uh, that I had worked with in 2014 on an advertising job in Houston, um, he was an art director at an agency at the time. Uh, I had maintained contact with him, and at one point he expressed an interest in designing the book. And he said he would do it for free. And while I appreciated that gesture, I told him no. Uh, I, I would not accept his work for free, and for two reasons. One, he's a professional, he needs to get paid. I'm very sensitive to that, uh, being a freelancer myself. And secondly, I wanted it to get it done in this lifetime. There's no weekends and holiday, you know, work and, you know, at night, that sort of thing. I wanted it to be something front and center on his plate. And so in 2022, between he and I, we pretty much spent uh, the majority of the year fashioning this book. Um, his layout took probably three to four months of, of uh, finessing and so on. And then I turned it over to a professional proofreader, um, a lady who used to be the final copy editor for Texas Monthly Magazine for 10 years, um, who now lives here in town. <clears throat> and she, at one point, she made over 1,500 changes to the copy. And I said uh, to her at one point, I said, Jill, I, I thought I was pretty good with the English language. And she said, you are. And I said, well, you could have fooled me. And as it turns out, most of the changes were punctuation that I had long forgotten since high school or standardization of different sections as far as how to handle names and things like that. So uh, she didn't really change too much of the text, which I found uh, heartening and fascinating and, and satisfying, actually. Um, but um, uh, and then, as I mentioned, I turned it over to a professional uh, indexer in Washington, D.C., and in two weeks she produced a wonderful index, and we suspect that this book will be used for research purposes for years, um, mainly because you can find stuff easily. I, I use it myself today. Um, so, and speaking of that, it's already been purchased by Auburn University and Emory University uh, for inclusion in their libraries. And um, we have a film and there and an Air Force library out west. I forget the location, but uh, um, it's also now carried in ten museum bookstores across the country, and two bookstores in England. And uh, we're in discussion with other bookstores. Just yesterday, I got word that the Atlanta History Center is going to start carrying it. So I'll be carrying books down there tomorrow um, uh, for their inventory and their gift shop. Um, so it's been quite fa fascinating, that side of the business, learning it and so on. And who knows, there's, I, I have a um, partnership strategist, shall we say, who is working with me. She has an extensive marketing background in auto racing and uh, is really pretty darn sharp. And she has brought up the idea and we have approached several people about possibly doing a documentary. Um, there's a, 
I'm told there's enough information here between the portraits and the jackets and the stories and all the other information that I collected to do an hour-long documentary. So we're shopping that around right now. Who knows if it'll come to pass, but um, we'll see. And uh, already people are asking me what I'm going to do as a follow-up. And to be honest with you, I don't know. We may do another uh, book, um, although it wouldn't be the same, I can tell you that, because many of the veterans that I photographed have since passed. And there's just not that many of them around anymore to do a portrait and, you know, capture firsthand stories and that sort of thing. Uh, so it would be a slightly different format, but uh, already I'm finding additional jackets are coming out of the woodwork as far as individual collections and other museums and so on. So we'll see. Um, uh, it's a fascinating subject and one that I'm glad I, I dove into. Um, uh, it's been very rewarding in that regard, and uh, I would welcome the opportunity to dive into other subjects. And of course, they don't have to take eight years, but um, if we could dive into something, uh, I've always you see a picture of a Porsche on the background of my wall. Um, when I was younger and didn't have any real responsibilities, I was fortunate enough to own a couple of Porsche cars. And, um, and that's always been a subject near and dear to my heart, so who knows? Um, we might do something in, along those lines um, in, in, you know, auto-related. Auto related. Um, anyway, um, uh, there is a, a website, uh, www.iibomberboys.com. I didn't want to do just bomberboys.com because I didn't want the FBI showing up on my doorstep on Sunday morning. Um, and you can find more information there. There's links to our YouTube channel, which we started, that has several of the interviews. Um, and uh, there's a portal there, of course, to buy the book. Um, it is available on Amazon, but I try not to tell too many people that because they take a pretty healthy chunk. Um, but it does have a far reach, that's for sure. Um, uh, I have made numerous presentations uh, across the country. Uh, last January I was in California, Plains of Fame Museum in Chino where I spoke. I spoke at Oshkosh for the third or fourth time uh, last summer at the largest air show in the country, Air Venture, uh, as part of the Experimental Aircraft Association to a standing room only crowd, by the way. And, um, and then uh, Oh, Lord, uh, the 8th Air Force Historical Society, I spoke to them last fall, um, also gave a presentation at the Military Aviation Museum in December. I spoke to the Atlanta World War II Roundtable, and uh, uh, there's a chance that I'll be speaking at the Air Force Command and Staff College next month over at Maxwell Air Force Base in Alabama. So we've got several other presentations uh, planned. I may be going to West Point to uh, uh, sell books there and possibly do a presentation, etc. So we've got a lot of ideas and um, uh, things we want to do. And uh, we think with Masters of the Air coming out uh, later this month here in January 2024, it's another Spielberg and Hanks uh, mini series, much, much along the lines of Band of Brothers. Um, and it'll be broadcast on Apple TV, and um, don't know if we'll be able to, you know, piggyback on that in any way, shape, or form. Um, not to steal their thunder, but, um, you know, I was working on this, I think, probably about the same time they started working on that. I don't know, but it's a happy accident, as it, as it is, um, and, um, uh, and very much along the same lines, I think, of what, what they're going to show in, uh, in the series, the, uh, the drama and the, the, just the overall hazards these guys faced when, um, when they were flying into combat in these aircraft. Um, I should say also that there's an important contribution by a fellow named John Mollison, speaking of aircraft, who's um, an artist and... He had done a, a picture of a P-51 Mustang a fighter plane of um, 
flown by Bob Punchy Powell, who was a friend of mine. He lived here locally. Um, and I had seen it somewhere, and I contacted him and asked him if I could use it in the book. And he turned me down initially, and he said, this is why. He said, I did that picture 20 years ago, and I can do it better now. Let me do a new one for you, which he did. And as it turns out, it's on the inside of the dust jacket, so it's about three feet wide, and it's drop-dead gorgeous. And, um, uh, and he also contributed several other wonderful illustrations for the book. Um, so it was very much a collaboration uh, amongst several people. Um, and um, I'm pretty darn proud of the result. Speaking of that, it's already won two international design silver, it's won silver awards in two international design competitions, including a Graphese uh, 2024 design competition award. And it was shortlisted in the New York Art Directors Club uh, competition last fall. So uh, it's a handsome book. Uh, we think it's just done about as well as it could be. And, and uh, all of the reviews that we've gotten from people who have purchased the book have been positive. Nobody's given it less than a five-star review. There's a little things, niggling things here and there that I would do differently now, but uh, by and large, we're pretty darn proud of the whole. And um, and I would encourage you to, if you have questions, please feel free to reach out and contact me. Um, my regular website, um, by the way, I've been uh, involved in shooting aviation subjects since 2008, 2007. Uh, that's been my specialty, but I, but the reason I chose aviation is because you can photograph people, you can photograph things on location, aircraft, you know, machines, uh, people working, um, uh, just, uh, you know, still life like I did with the jackets. There's just a whole genre, uh, variety of opportunity there, uh, because if I, if I had to shoot tennis shoes for Nike every day the rest of my life, I'd be bonkers. Um, but I like working on location and bringing studio techniques uh, to location work and and just working in a lot of different environments. Uh, I think it's a constant challenge. It keeps me sharp and and um, and my clients seem to like the results. So as long as I'm able, I'll keep doing it. Um, thank you very much for your attention and please feel free to contact me uh, should you have questions. Take care. Bye bye.